Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hanging Out for a Living. Today, we're diving deep into the world of financial technology and business efficiency. So our special guest is Andre Petrov. He's the development director at um, Electronic Merchant Systems here in Rochester, New York, and hi, a company that's pioneering the way we think about digital payments, banking, and so much more. They consult both um, new and existing business owners on optimizing financial operations, leveraging networking, social media, and also various media tools to help their clients succeed. Whether it's digital banking, payment processing, or even the nuances of the new EMV chip and PIN technology. I hope I got that right, Andre. Um, yes, you did. Yeah, I, all this technical mumbo jumbo way over my head. Um, we, we always want to go to the expert, and Andre is truly your go to expert for that. So, Andre, welcome and thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the invite. And we'll dive in. Uh, we'll get going here. So can you tell us about the importance of, in, of efficient payment processing and digital banking solutions for business today? And how does this ultimately affect their bottom line? Well, so I had a client of mine that uh, they were processing their invoices through QuickBooks, and then they had the accounts, uh, you know, manager calling each one of the businesses and collecting the card information and then manually entering it into a card machine, which, you know, is all right. But when you have hundreds of clients and you spend an entire day and a half doing this, the resources of that human person can be used better elsewhere. Um, we had a uh, online invoicing solution where they can have a uh, custom payment link that when they send over the PDF invoice, they copy and paste it into the email. And then their customer clicks on the pay now link and they put in their own card information and it's paid. So now that person has an extra day and a half to work on other tasks rather than chasing after, you know, the outstanding payments. The efficiency factor comes into not only was it uh, a time solution, but it also facilitated the, their ability to track who paid, who didn't, who is beyond their their terms or who is behind. Uh, that way it's all on one screen and you can very easily at a glance know who you need to follow up with versus sure. you know referring back to, to paper notes or something like that. Um, that bottom line comes down to the, the <laughs> whatever you're paying that person to do these calls and collect these payments, uh, being able to use them in a, in a better, more effective capacity for, for other things. Absolutely. You just gave a whole new meaning to working smarter and not harder. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but also when it comes to just your, your regular mom and pop, like uh, even delivery services, you have a, you have a pizza guy that goes and does deliveries, uh, but you want to be able to take the chip transaction rather than it being paid over the phone. Cause you know, sometimes people aren't always on the up and up and they'll use, you know, somebody else's card that they don't know, or they'll find a card and there's not really much verification beyond just the three digit code on the back. Right. Uh, but at least with the chip card, uh, you can at least look at the signature on the back. And then when they sign on the screen of whatever po uh, mobile device that they have, you can see whether or not that, you know, kind of matches up or not. Absolutely. Um, there's a little bit of a deeper level when we get to the chip and pin technology that you're talking about earlier. Uh, but in reality, even with, with the uh, contactless NFC near field communication payments, if you have like a smartwatch or you want to pay with your phone, uh, that's technically not a, a real card present transaction. You have loaded the card onto this device and through the NFC, it's a technically a, a card not present transaction. Oh, okay. um, and a lot of people don't really realize that because, gotcha. you know, let's say somebody had, you know, a spouse or their boyfriend or girlfriend that they are no longer on good terms, but they had access to not only their card, but they know the billing information, likely uh, the billing phone number, which are all requisites for adding cards into those digital wallets. You know, they could maliciously go out on a little bit of a spending spree with, you know, their other person's card loaded on there. 
Yikes. Yeah, don't want that to happen. Um, so we mentioned a little bit, um, social media and networking have become key aspects of business growth. I know you're a master at the networking and uh, social media um, component. So can you share some insights into how electronic merchant systems helps businesses leverage these platforms effectively? Yeah. So a lot of it comes down to the way that our office is structured. Um, myself, having gone to RIT, I was a new media marketing uh, degree. Then I was working with not only our on-campus college activities board running events. So marketing was a, a, a very driving factor for getting attendees, which created revenue. Uh, but then after when I worked at Red Bull Corporate, we did marketing from that aspect. So a lot of it is inherent knowledge from you know, past experiences, but even sure. our New York State director had his own ad agency. So he brings that kind of knowledge to the table. And that's something that our office specializes in as a result. Um, not every office is going to be the same, but we do this as a uh, as an added benefit that we don't charge for because it's like we only succeed when our clients succeed. Like we sure. want to see you get busier, have more revenue, um, increase the number of transactions. Uh, and that's the the kind of give and take, uh, you know, I'll scratch your back relationship that we have with our clients. Uh, also, that's what's going to be able to keep their lights on. We want them to have that profitability so that they can continue their dream, maximize and expand on it to whatever it is that their end goal is. Uh, when it comes to, social media, it can be very daunting. Like, you know, I'm only 37, but there's some stuff on, like, for example, TikTok that I have very little knowledge of. Um, whether or not you think that's a safe app in the first place is another story. But the the true kind of basics, you know, your Facebook, your Instagram, sure. uh, it's now called X, but past Twitter, uh, those are all very important free tools that everyone has at their disposal. Uh, to be able to uh, increase their reach because, uh, sure. you know, ads can be expensive in you know, your traditional yes. media, TV, radio, uh, print. Uh, but then there's also ads that people think that, oh, well, if I spend $200 a month on Facebook ads, it'll just drive all of my my business and, you know, it'll just take care of itself. Not very true. Like there's still got to be some directives to kind of follow. And so depending on the business type, we'll kind of consult on which is the best best approach. When's the best time to make those posts? What kind of content would best serve the, cust the potential customers for sure. those clients? So that way they maximize a free tool that is, you know, in their pocket. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's great that you provide that surround sound of um, that marketing. So, so important. Um, we talk about rate analysis, and it's a term that might go over the heads of some business owners, including me. <laughs> can you break it down for us? Um, what are the tangible benefits and how can businesses make more informed decisions based on it? Yep. So if you're a business owner and you've ever accepted credit cards, uh, typically in the past, they've been paper statements that arrive every month uh, that show the previous month's activity, all of your batches, the number of transactions, maybe a breakdown of what card types you're receiving, and uh, the total dollar amounts, as well as all the fees involved. What nobody explains that we do when we have our you know initial consult is we explain, hey, this is the pricing platform that you're currently on, because there's a number of them. There's um, if you use Square or Clover or uh, one of those uh, PayPal kind of apps, sure. it's an all card rate. So it doesn't matter what kind of card the, the merchant accepts from the customer, it's one flat fee. The problem with that is that a tiered approach would better tailor the cost to the card type because you know Square is 2.7% uh, for all of them. But what most people don't realize is that debit cards could be as low as 1.01%, credit 1.5%, 1.59%. So that margin between what Square is charging for all the cards and what almost 80% of people are using with their debit card is profit that Square is making that the merchant should be putting into their pocket. Gotcha. Um, we also have a math department at corporate headquarters in Cleveland uh, that they crunch those numbers for those merchant statements because they're designed to be either incomprehensible or confusing uh, on purpose so that 
the the brokers and resellers of the world, the third parties, are able to kind of camouflage and kind of hide their profit margin into what they're charging the the, the merchant. Sure. Because we're a direct credit card processing company and we're direct agents. We're nationally licensed. So they're, you know, as long as you have a US tax ID number and a US bank account, uh, we're able to open up accounts for you uh, regardless of geography. Um, we're able to break it down into one Excel spreadsheet that shows all the different card types that you're accepting, the rate at which it's currently being charged. Many times American Express, which is, you know, the bane of many merchants' existence is always higher. Um, and then what our proposed rate and the true dollar for dollar card type for card type percent for per percent side by side comparison shows this is how much money you're currently losing because of either using an all card rate or uh, a third party reseller or a brokerage solution that was either presented to you locally through a friend or a family member or even a bank because by mm -hmm. federal law banks cannot be processors processors cannot be banks so for example bank of america if you open a business checking account there they'll be like oh yeah go talk to kevin in our merchant services so you can accept credit cards go talk to kevin thinking that it's still all under the bank of america umbrella sure but in reality bank of america merchant services is entirely separate from bank of america and they don't talk to one another by law they can't so right. that you know one can't look into the account of the other um because you know Sometimes there's nefarious people and some fraud that could occur. Um, but so that's where we facilitate identifying the dollar amount of, you know, hey, you haven't had a rate increase because we do proactive rate reviews annually on all of our clients. Um, it might not make sense to make the change now. Let's table this for six months. We'll mm -hmm. reanalyze it. It's all complimentary. They don't get put into a sales funnel where people will be calling in and harassing them. Sure. Hey, you know, we saw we did an analysis. None of that. Um, and if they don't ever want to move forward, they won't be hearing from EMS corporate or myself until, you know, probably there'll be an issue. And then the, the support they currently have will probably fall flat and gotcha. then we'll get a call back. So right. that's how exactly. it all kind of works in. Yep. Well, thank you for that. And our last but not least question, um, EMV chip and pin technology is really rapidly becoming the new standard, right? Mm -hmm. So for those who might be unfamiliar, could you um, explain what it is and why it's important for businesses to integrate this technology into their operations? Uh, so it is vital from a security standpoint, but it's not mandatory. Um, ah. And we only recommend it in places that it makes sense. So for example, a bar or a restaurant where you're gonna get a check or you're gonna have a tab opened or the station isn't within reach to the customer, we're not going to recommend it because otherwise you're going to have to have a solution for them to be able to input their pin number into a device. Uh, okay. So there it might not make sense, but um, when you're in a, a retail capacity uh, and there's a potentially customer facing pin pad or uh, something of the like, or one of those like tablets where you can flip the, the screen sure. over, yeah, it would be recommended to be able to have chip and pin because that's the added layer of security beyond just, hey, maybe you found a purse on the ground or a wallet and you grab the card. Technically, yeah. that would be a chip present, card present transaction. Um, but if it's a debit card, you can run it as a credit. And as long as there's money in the account, that's the credit line that you, the bank would allow you to use without entering a pen. So that's why there's always that debit or credit button when you use right. a debit card. Um, so if it forces a customer to put in a pin number, if you found the card on the street, you wouldn't know what that person's pin number is. So it's that additional layer of security if you so desire it. It also enables you to get into a little bit of a lower uh, rate because of that additional security. Okay. Um, inversely is the case for those near field communication phone or smartwatch payments because that's a, a card not present transaction and actually right. increases the cost to the merchant by a half percent depending on the card type. Okay. Yep. Wow. That. I I can just tell you, all I can think of is wow. And to say thank you so much for those insights, Andre. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know about everybody else out there, but that kind of blows my mind and gives me a lot to think about. And you also were really able to 
um, make it um, 101 friendly, right? Uh, mm. <laughs> merchant services for, for dummies, so to speak, which I fall <laughs> into. <laughs> so um, this has been an enlightening conversation and I'm sure our viewers have gained valuable knowledge that they can apply to their own businesses. Um, if you want to continue the conversation with Andre or have any questions about improving your financial operations, networking, or the technology that drives modern business, please don't hesitate to reach out to him and his team at Electronic Merchant Systems. And uh, we'll drop all the relevant links in the description below. So remember, the future of your business might just be a click away. Until next time, everybody, keep on hanging out for a living. Bye for now. <laughs> Get after it. <laughs>